Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you activate an alcohol towards a nucleophilic substitution. OHs are poor leaving groups and they require certain activation either with acid or with the substitution towards a tosylate group in order to participate in SN1 and SN2 processes. Let's go ahead and get started. So in general, the first thing we should address is why OH- is a poor leaving group. So leaving group ability is essentially related to the inverse of the pKa of the conjugate acid. That is all to say, the lower the pKa of the conjugate acid, the better the leaving group, right? So the stronger the acid, the stronger the conjugate acid, the stronger the leaving group. The pKaH, for, which is the pKa of the conjugate acid for Cl minus, is negative 6.3. That's very low. So Cl minus is a very good leaving group because HCl is a very strong acid. Conversely, the pKaH for OH- is 14, because the acidity of water, or the pKa of water, is 14. As a result, OH- is a about 10 to the 20.3 fold worse leaving group than chloride anion. It's quite terrible. So, both the SN1 and the SN2 reactions have poor rates because OH- is a poor leaving group. Right? It doesn't matter whether you're doing the first case where the OH- is leaving to form a cation or whether a nucleophile is trying to push out OH- in an SN2 process. Both reactions are dependent on having a good leaving group. OH- is not, and so neither reaction will uh, proceed. OH will not leave without some sort of activation. One way that we can go ahead and improve the ability of the OH- as a leaving group is to protonate the alcohol group beforehand either in aqueous acidic conditions or non-aqueous acidic conditions. The reason this works is that the pKaH of H2O is negative 1.7. That's the pKa of the hydronium ion, H3O+. Right? Water does not have a negative charge, and so when it's kicked off as a leaving group, it is much more stable than OH-. In fact, it's about 10 to the 15.7 times better than OH- as a leaving group, and relatively comparable to the halides like Cl-. This tends to favor an SN1 pathway for secondary, tertiary, and allylic or benzylic alcohols. So things where you would form an okay or moderately stable cation, you can perform an SN1 pathway. So for example, consider this secondary alcohol here, isopropanol, if you were to react it with one equivalent of HCl in aqueous conditions, we now have a source of protons and a source of nucleophile, the Cl-. The first step would be that the OH uh, lone pair would steal a proton from the hydronium ion. We're using hydronium in this case instead of HCl because we're in aqueous conditions and HCl is always deprotonated. So the OH will then protonate itself to give you OH2+, which is now a very good activated leaving group. The bond can then spontaneously rupture to give you the cation, the isopropyl cation, and then the chlorine can attack that cation in an SN1 process to give you the isopropyl chloride. Mechanistically, the protonation is always a discrete first step. It is not concerted. So you're not protonating the OH as it's leaving, right? That can happen only with enzymes which position the protons in the appropriate place at the same time. Otherwise, you would have to invoke a termolecular process, something that involves three molecules coming together at the same time, which is extremely unlikely. And so, again, protonation is always a first discrete step. And it, another important fact is that it requires stoichiometric amounts of acid. Right? This is not a catalytic amount of acid. You need to protonate every single OH group that you're liberating in the solution. There is another way to activate alcohols towards nucleophilic substitution, and that is to substitute them first with a tosylate group. The tosylate group is this group shown here that has a toluene ring attached to a sulfate group. The tosylate has a conjugate acid pKa of negative 2.8, which means it's a very good leaving group comparable to that of a halide. The tosylate group is a good leaving group because it is both polarizable, thanks to the sulfur, and resonance stabilized thanks to the oxygens on the sulfate part. To compare this to a regular alcohol, consider the breaking of the uh, OH bond. This results in the creation of a hydroxide anion, which is relatively unstable. However, in the case of breaking the bond between the R and the O in the tosylate group, we create the tosylate anion, which is resonance stabilized and very polarizable, meaning that both nucleophilic substitution 
in the unimolecular and bimolecular case are supported. How do you actually go about tosylating an alcohol? This isn't just like adding protons where you attach something to the group, you're actually substituting one functional group for another. It's actually quite straightforward and simply involves treating your alcohol with tosyl chloride. Tosyl chloride looks exactly like the tosylate group shown above, except that at this position, instead of an oxygen, we have a chlorine. So what happens is when you treat first with tosyl chloride, the ROH group will perform a nucleophilic attack onto the sulfur, which is highly electrophilic due to the electron withdrawing oxygens. This will then create an intermediate where one of the oxygens has a negative charge. You might be wondering how it's possible that sulfur has five different things attached to it, but that's fine because sulfur has access to d orbitals and can actually access hypervalence. So in this case, the sulfur uh, has this intermediate state where then the negative charge collapses and kicks out the chlorine as a Cl-. Note that the OH remains protonated in this situation because there's no extraneous base in the solution. The next step is that the chlorine that's released acts as a base and deprotonates the remaining OH plus to give HCl as a byproduct. Once the proton is removed, we have successfully tosylated the alcohol. Notice that where there was once ROH, we now have RO tosylate. We've substituted the OH for the tosylate group. Activating primary alcohols is a little bit different than activating secondary or tertiary alcohols because primary alcohols can never undergo SN1 unless they are resin and stabilized. This is because a, the resulting primary carbocation intermediate is extremely unstable. As a result, SN2 is the primary pathway for primary alcohols. Tosylation is one very effective way to activate primary OHs to SN2. For example, let's say that we had the compound ethanol. If we were to first treat it with tosyl chloride, we can get the resulting ethanol tosylate right here, where we have the, ethanol, the OH replaced by the tosylate group. The nucleophile we provide as a second step, right, a second discrete step, can then go ahead and substitute the tosylate group via an SN2 pathway to give the nucleophilic substituted product in, of the alcohol. Notice this is two discrete steps. We are not mixing tosyl chloride and the nucleophile together in the same reaction vessel. We are first tosylating and then conducting the nucleophilic substitution via SN2. That's very important. Acid can also be used to activate primary OHs to SN2. However, there is a caveat, and that is acid is poorly compatible with many non-halide strong nucleophiles. That is because most of them are strong bases. For example, let's say that we wanted to activate ethanol to nucleophilic substitution with H+. What we would want to happen is that the nucleophile, after protonation, would attack and then substitute off, kicking off water as the byproduct. However, there's a problem with this, and that is that this intermediate here, the protonated intermediate, is very unstable, or rather it's very acidic. And so if you have a nucleophile that's a strong base, you can think of something like an alkoxide ion or even something like a thiolate or cyanide, which is not a very strong base, but much str much more basic than the OH group here is, the nucleophile can simply then deprotonate this protonated alcohol via a proton transfer, which gets you back to H nucleophile, which is now deactivated as a nucleophile, right? H nucleophiles tend are much less reactive because of their positive character, and we're back to ethanol where we started. So while acid can be used in some situations to uh, nucleophile, perform a nucleophilic substitution, it's poorly compatible with nucleophiles that have a negative charge. Halogens are useful in this situation because halogens are very, very weak bases, and so they will tend not to deprotonate the OH2+. However, many other negative nucleophiles will. A specific situation where tosylate presents a distinct advantage over protonation as a form of activation is trying to form a carbon-carbon bond via SN2. For example, let's say we wanted to build a new carbon-carbon bond using a Grignard reagent. Specifically, let's say we wanted to take isopropyl alcohol and attach a phenyl group here where the alcohol once was. A very easy way to do this would be to use the phenyl magnesium bromide Grignard reagent, which would, could perform an SN2 reaction directly at this site. The problem is that OH- again is not a good leaving group, and so even though the Grignard reagent is an extremely strong nucleophile, it would have a problem. OH- also presents a very distinct problem towards Grignard reagents. 
the OH proton is relatively acidic, and Grignard reagents are incredibly powerful bases. And so what will happen is that the Grignard reagent, before even being able to perform an SN2 reaction, will simply deprotonate the alcohol, both deactivating itself, destroying your Grignard reagent, and rendering this O-, minus, which is not a leaving group. You cannot kick off O2- minus as a potential leaving group. And so Grignard reagents are distinctly counterindicated when you have OH- minus present. You can solve this problem pretty easily, though, by first tosylating the alcohol. If you treat it with tosyl chloride and pyridine, which is just a catalyst, you get the resulting isopropyl tosylate. This has no free protons, which are acidic, and as a result is compatible with Grignard reagents. So you can then treat this with the Grignard reagent and then perform an aqueous workup, as you usually do, to get the desired phenyl uh, group onto the where the alcohol was through an SN2 process, right? So remember, Grignard reagents are incompatible with acidic protons like OH, which means not only can you not activate with acid, but you cannot directly substitute an OH. So you first must convert the OH into a tosylate, which has no free protons, and then you can use the Grignard reagent to perform the desired substitution. A final thing I want to talk about is how nature activates OHs towards leaving groups, because nature is not using tosyl chloride or Grignard reagents and things like this. Instead, what nature does is use an alternate good leaving group to activate alcohols, and that is phosphate and pyrophosphate, which is sometimes referred to by the moniker of nature's tosylate. The phosphate group and the pyrophosphate group look very similar. The pyrophosphate group is simply two phosphate groups stitched together. And if you notice, they look very similar to the tosylate group in that we have the carbonyl on a period three element, phosphorus instead of sulfur, which means, again, it is polarizable and resonance and stabilized by the carbonyls. So it is a good leaving group. The way that this is done enzymatically is that phosphorylation occurs through the use of ATP. I'll show you the mechanism here. Consider that we have an alcohol here, the ROH, the enzyme will concomitantly deprotonate the alcohol to give you RO- as a nucleophile, which can then attack here at the phosphorus, removing ADP as the byproduct, right? So this is our ATP. The phosphorus is attacked by the deprotonated alcohol, and you see a nucleophilic substitution on the phosphorus to kick out ADP, and the resulting product is a phosphorylated alcohol as opposed to a tosylated alcohol. This phosphate group is now an activated leaving group and can be much more easily kicked off than the OH group. And with that, we've actually reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos in the chemistry playlist. And if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.